I'm Miss Craig. So for those of you who are in person at school, you already know me. We already see each other all the time. For those of you who teach with Miss Whitley, um, I am one of the teachers that's at school. So because Miss Whitley is my friend and because Miss Underwood is my friend, we decided to do some of the remote lessons together while you guys are not here over the next two weeks, just because we wanted to see you too. I wanna see the remote um, students too. I want them to be able to see my face. So um, if you have any questions about the reading stuff, you guys can always send me an email or let Miss Whitley know and we can talk some more. But uh, for our lesson today, we are talking about nonfiction texts. All right, friends. So the text we talked about this week was called Earthworms. And remember how Miss Craig told you a text is anything you read. So a text could be our shared reading poem. It could be the book that we're reading. If you have a text on your phone, it's something you're reading. It's a message from someone. So a nonfiction text is text that's real. We're gonna learn facts. Remember, we talk about the main idea, what a text is mostly about, and then we talk about facts, facts, facts. Facts are little bits of information that we get from the text, okay? So I'm gonna show you, um, hold on a second, let me figure out which button I'm using. Okay, I'm gonna show you the text we're using this week, the earthworms. Is that working? Hold on. There we go. All right, so let me show you the text we're looking at this week. The one about earthworms, remember? So we are reading about earthworms. And the thing we know about earthworms, um, or the thing we, let, let, let me back up. The thing we know about this nonfiction text about earthworms is that we can learn so much about earthworms. And um, there are going to be some text features. So the first thing I see on the front cover of this book is that there's an actual photograph of a worm. It's not a picture that I drew. It's an actual photograph. Somebody took that picture. And then when we scroll through the book a little bit more, there's our table of contents. Now, remember, the table of contents is what we look at to get more information about a text. So on the top, on the blue, it says all sorts of worms. Hold on a second, friends. I want to see if I can share part of this with you. Let me see if I can do that. Mm. Let's see. Nope. Okay, whatever. We're going to go with it. So if I'm looking at my table of contents and I'm trying to figure out um, where I can read about the different parts of an earthworm, the different parts of its body. That's what we did in class on Tuesday. I read through the table of contents. At first it says all sorts of worms, and that can be found on page six or seven. And then finding earthworms would be pages 8 and 9. A worm's body, pages 10 and 11. So let me scroll down here to page 10 and 11 because that's where I think I'm going to learn about a worm's body. So I'm looking at the page number right here in the middle of the page. I'm going to go to page 10 and 11. Oh, here we go. So if I want to double check the page number, then there's 10 right there. And then here's 11. So let me go back. 10 and 11 is where I read about an earthworm's body, okay? I'm going to read this section to you. The heading or the title of this section says a worm's body. And it says a worm is a very simple animal. It has no skeleton, no lungs, no eyes, and no ears. Its body is a tube made of many tiny segments. Each segment is filled with liquid and has a bristle that help the worm, bristles that help the worm move. So um, if I'm looking at the picture, another text feature that we're going to talk about is labels. Labels we go over in writing a lot. Sometimes Miss Craig will say, what's this a picture of? I'm having a hard time understanding what's in your picture. Label it for me. And that means I want you to go back and tell me what the parts or pieces are. So if we're looking at the earthworm and we see the little lines drawn to the parts or pieces, that's how the author is illustrating the, um, that's how the author is labeling the illustration. That's how they're telling us and teaching us what parts an earthworm has on it. 
So if you look at the top, it says front. And earthworms, they don't really have faces or anything like a cat or a dog does. They just have a front and a back. And so it's got front. Then it says mouth. So we read in the text that they have no lungs, no ears, no eyes, but they have a mouth. So their mouth is at the top, at the front. Then there's the segments. And segments are like the little sections that are all put together to make the worms. To me, it looks like, um, I don't know, it just looks like pieces put together almost. And they're called segments. I'm sorry. So segments are those little sections that are put together. And then where it says bristles, bristles are those little black things that look like hairs. And um, they help the earthworm in a different way, which we read more about later on. And then the saddle, that looks like to me that little thing you slide over your pencil to help you hold a grip on it. That's what it looks like to me. It's called a saddle. And that's where the worm stores its eggs. And then there's the back. He just has a front and a back. Okay. And then in this blue section right here, this little blue box, that's what we call a caption. And what that is, is that's giving us a little bit more information about the picture. And it says, worms can tell the difference between light and dark. If a worm is uncovered, it tries to get back in the dark. So what I've learned right there is worms like it when it's dark. They don't want to be near the light. So I'm going to go down here to page 11. Earthworms breathe through their skin. So that's why they don't have a nose. Because they're bringing in and out of their skin. So um, it says they take air in. That's trapped in the soil. So they like to be down in the soil where it's damp. And what they do is they... Um, sorry, hold on, friends. I got stuck. Okay, so what they do is when they're down in the soil and it's damp... They suck in that air that gets stuck down in the soil. On wet days, worms' air pockets fill with water, and worms have to go up to the surface. So when they're down in that damp soil and their air, their air pockets get too much water in them, they have to go to the top because if they didn't, they would drown underground. So if you're looking at the illustration, the or the photograph, I'm sorry, it's a photograph, Across the top, that long rectangle is a picture of this, the skin, and that helps us understand how they breathe in and out of their skin. And then this picture that's in the circle right here, this photograph in the circle, it says a, word, a worm's body is damp, so it's a little bit wet feeling, a little cold, a little wet, but it's not slimy like we think it is. And the front end of the worm is more pointed than the back. So I'm going to guess that that's the front of the worm because it looks like it has more of a point to it. Okay? So your job today is to go to the um, – let me show you. So if you're not remote, I'm going to take a pause just a minute. If you're one of Miss Whitley's friends – Hang on for just a second. I'm going to talk to you guys. But if you're one of Miss Craig or Miss Underwood's friends, you're going to have a spot that says October or it says um, the dates for the week or whatever. And you're going to go to it. And for the day where it says week one, you're going to go over here and you can see the word earthworms right there in the middle of the screen. And you're going to tap on it and it's going to pop the book up. And I want you guys to touch it and I want you to read it. And here's the deal. If you can't read all the words on the page because it's a tricky text and it's difficult, it's nonfiction. If you can't read all the parts of the text, that's okay. What I would love for you to do, though, is to scroll through, look at the photographs because sometimes you can learn so much from the photographs before you guys even read the book. So I want you guys to look through the photographs. If you have been in class with Miss Whitley, I mean with Miss Underwood or Miss Craig, we've talked about this text some. So I would love for you to be able to share with the adult at your house what it is that you've learned or what we've talked about as a group. Okay. If there's someone in your house, a sibling or an adult that can read this book to you, that would be awesome. I would love that. Um, if you are in Miss Whitley's class, she has put some activities on Seesaw for you to do that goes with the reading this week. So you guys check back in on your Seesaw and follow through with that. Okay, so I'm going to stop today. I'm not going to talk too long because um, it's 
some of our first days in remote and we're still we're still trying to figure out some stuff so if you need to get a hold of your teacher you know how to do that and i look forward to seeing you guys in groups in a little while don't forget to come to your google meets all right see you guys in a little in a little bit